Lesson 5.11, Solve Multi-Step Word Problems. To solve a problem, we need to decide what steps to do. Is there something we need to find out first? Then we need to choose operations, like addition or subtraction, that match with the actions in the problem. So as we discussed in the last video, to solve a word problem, we read it carefully, we can circle important information, we ask ourselves, what do we need to find? What is it asking of us? And we look for addition or subtraction clue words. We make a plan to solve it. We can write an equation, then solve it, and check our answer to make sure we did it correctly. In the last video, we also talked about subtraction clue words that are in word problems. And that video is linked in this video's description. So when you see words like how many more than, fewer than, how much more than, less than, or any of these, it's a clue that we need to subtract. And we learned back in video 4.10 some addition clue words for word problems like add, in all, altogether. These are all clue words in word problems that would tell us we need to add. And in video 5.9, we learned about bar models. And a bar model can show we are subtracting to take away from the total amount. We're looking at 30 as the whole amount. We have a part here that's missing and another part. And we break apart the 30 to find the missing part. And in 4.9, we learned that a bar model can show we are combining that's adding two parts to show a total amount. So here we do have a part, and we have another part, and we combine them to get the sum. That would be the whole. Bar models and clue words help us know what to do to solve a problem. It says Sophia found 29 seashells. Tala found 34 seashells. How many more seashells are needed so they will have 80 seashells? We think 29 and 34 are important numbers. That's important information. And it's asking us how many more seashells are needed so they will have 80 seashells. So first, we need to find how many seashells they have now. We need to add 29 and 34. We can write it in place value columns and start with the ones place. 9 plus 4 is equal to 13. We regroup a 10 and put the 3 in the ones place. Then we add the 10s. We have 3, 4, 5, 6 10s. That means 29 plus 34 is 63. They have 63 shells now. And that's very helpful. Now that we know they have 63, we can figure out how many are needed for them to have 80. The whole amount is 80. We know we have one part, 63. We're missing another part. So we can use subtraction. We can subtract 80 minus 63, and that will give us the missing part. We start with the ones place. We have zero ones, and we need to take three away, and we don't have enough. So we need to regroup from the tens place. Eight tens becomes seven tens. We give it to the ones as ten ones. Now we can subtract ten minus three ones is seven ones. Seven tens minus six tens is one ten. That means our missing part is seventeen, which tells us they need seventeen more seashells to have eighty. Here it's telling us to complete the bar models for the steps we do to solve the problem. The problem is that Sarah has 72 ribbons, Tala has 38 pink ribbons, and 15 purple ribbons. How many more ribbons does Sarah have than Tala? We see the clue words, how many more than, so we know we're comparing two numbers. 
Tala's ribbons are in two parts, 38 and 15. So first, we need to find how many Tala has. We need to add the 38 and the 15. We can stack them in place value columns. We start with the ones. Eight ones plus five ones is 13 ones. We regroup the 10 and write the three in the ones place. Now we add three, four, five tens. That's 53. So we know Tala has 53 ribbons. They're pink and purple. Then we compare their ribbon amounts. Sarah has 72, Tala has 53. The difference between 72 and 53 will be our answer. We're comparing them, so we have two bar models to show we're comparing two different numbers. We can use subtraction. We can do 72 minus 53 and get the difference. We start with the ones place. We have two ones and need to take three away, but we don't have enough. So we have to regroup from the tens place and the seven is going to become a six and the two is going to become a 12. Now we have 12 minus three, which is nine. And we have six tens minus five tens, which is one ten. That tells us that this little piece right here is a 19. That's the difference between 72 and 53. That means Sarah has 19 more ribbons. To solve this problem, we needed to do addition first, then we needed to subtract. This problem says Dave has 34 red apples and he trades six of those apples for eight green apples. How many apples does Dave have now? So we need to find how many he has now. He has 34 and when you trade something, you're giving it away and getting something back. So he's giving away six. We need to know how many he has after he get, traded away the six. So we can do 34 minus six to find that missing part. We have a 34, there's a four in the ones place. We don't have enough ones to take away six, so we can regroup from the tens place, make that two tens. That'll make that 14 tens. Now we have 14 minus six, and 14 minus six is eight. We have two tens, and we're not taking any tens away, so we just bring the two down. That's 28. So we know six plus 28 is equal to 34. So we found out how many apples he has after trading away the six. Now we need to find how many apples he has after getting eight in the trade. So we know he's got 28 now after trading away the six. Now he's getting back eight for the trade. So we're gonna add 28 plus eight. Eight plus eight is 16. We regroup the 10, put the six in the ones place. Two tens plus one 10 is three tens. That means he's got 36 apples now. Sometimes when you trade, you trade an equal value, like he would trade six red apples for six green apples. But in this case, he traded six red apples for eight green apples. That's two more. So look, he had 34 red apples. Now he has 36. That's two more. Eight is two more than six. And he has two more apples than he started with. To solve this problem, first we needed to subtract, then we needed to add to get the answer. This problem says Emma and Lisa each have 19 pieces of gum. They buy one package with 10 pieces of gum in it. How many pieces of gum do they have now? So I want you to be very careful when you're reading this. It does say in the beginning that they each have 19 pieces, but down here it's asking how many pieces do they have? That means together. So be careful, it does not say how many do they each have now. It's saying how many do they have now. So we know we need to put their pieces of gum together. 
So, first, we find out how many they have to start in all. Emma has 19. Lisa has 19. We need to add 19 plus 19. 9 plus 9 is 18. We regroup the 10, put the 8 down. We add the 10s. We have three 10s. That means, to start, they had 38 pieces of gum. Then they bought a package with 10 pieces of gum in it. They had 38. They bought a package with 10 pieces of gum in it. Now we find how many they have after buying that 10 more. We have 38 plus 10. That's an easy one. We're just adding a 10. So the 8 stays the same. We got one more 10. It's 48. We know they have 48 pieces of gum together. To solve this, we needed to add and then add again. So when we're trying to figure out what operation to use, add or subtract, we need to ask ourselves, what are the actions in the problem? Are we giving something away? Are we getting some more of something? Are we combining? Do we add then subtract? Maybe we subtract and then add. Maybe we add and then add again. Maybe we subtract and then subtract again. We have to look at the actions in the problem to know. Now we're going to be moving on to chapter six, and that's all about three digit addition and subtraction. And I bet there'll be some regrouping in there too. I hope you'll join me there, and I hope you have a really, really good day. Bye.